For the longest time, Shotgun has had the same simple transitions, but now they got new ones, so let's check them out. They came out back in version 22.9.23, so it was a while ago. However, they have a good setup of variety options, as well as a new option that I'm really excited to talk about. So the easiest way to access the new transitions in Shotgun is obviously by having both of your clips ready in the timeline. Now, nothing has changed in the terms of how transitions show up in Shotgun. You basically take either the first or second clip that you want to add a transition to, and overlay them in the track. This creates a little cross section, letting you know that the transition has been made. Now, before we move on, just know that you can change the length and duration of the transition by going to the ends of the cross section and dragging them inward or outward. To get access to all the transitions, just select on the cross section and go to the properties tab or just right click and select properties. Then you'll get a new window with all the options and a pretty cool preview screen that you can enable or disable to see what the transition will look like before applying it, along with many other controls that we'll go over later. But for now, you can see that the default transition is set to dissolve. If we scroll down, you can see all the options that are available to use and each one will display a quick preview of what it will look like. For example, for any option that you choose, you can adjust the softness of the effect along with inverting it as well. Another neat thing that you can do if you choose to use it is applying an audio crossfade, which you can adjust as well. And that's what all of these tools allow you to do. Once you pick and adjust the right transition for you, all you have to do is click on it and it automatically applies to the edit. And as I mentioned before, you can always go back to the timeline and adjust the speed if necessary. However, that's not the only way to add a transition into Shotgun. There is another way, and that way is to use preset keyframes. To do this, you first have to make a second video track and move one of your clips to the second track, depending on the transition you want to make. Then just make sure that your clip above overlays your first clip. From there, just select the video clip on the second track above and go to filters to apply the size, position, and rotate filter. From here, just go to the preset drop-down menu and choose whichever you like. I'll choose this slide in from bottom preset, and if we play it, you can see that it has been added to our video. However, it is a bit slow, but no worries, we can fix that. All you have to do is go back to your settings and select on this keyframes icon, which will give us a prompt and just select yes, and we'll be in the keyframes timeline. Now these little points are the animated keyframes. Now it's showing us three, but depending on the type of transition you chose, as well as the speed that you wanna set it at, you can always remove one just by right clicking and select remove. And for now, these are the two keyframes that I'm just gonna adjust. And to make it slide faster, all we have to do is drag this second keyframe closer to the beginning of the clip near the first keyframe. And as you know, the closer you move towards the beginning, the faster it will be. Or if you want an easier way, you can go to the track above in the clip and you'll see a little toggle in the corner, which you can drag. And it will give you the same warning prompt. Just click on yes. Then the same principle will apply. Dragging the toggle inwards or outwards will affect the speed of the transition. But once you got it at your desired speed, you're good to go. And then to go back to your original timeline, just click on the bottom timeline tab down here. And you can hit play and preview it for yourself. And remember, you can do the same thing for all the presets that are listed. Now, here's a quick tip that you can use to enhance your use of transitions, and that's by using sound effects. Now, you have to be careful with this, making sure that you add the appropriate sound effect to the right type of transition and use it sparingly. Not every transition or cut requires a sound effect. And remember, the sound effect should match the scene and not overpowering it by being too loud. But you may be asking, where can I find some good quality sound effects? And that's where longtime partner Artlist comes into play. So for those of you who didn't know, Artlist Artlist has an amazing library of sound effects and music that you guys can use for your own videos. And they carry everything and it makes it so easy to find the exact sound effect or music track that you're looking for for your videos. They also have a feature where if you like a certain type of track, certain type of genre, you can use that to find similar tracks just in case you want to build a library of all of these assets. Now they gave me a special link for you guys to use which will give you two additional months if you go ahead and choose a subscription. Now they have a ton of subscriptions that you can choose from. Some of them covers all social media content like YouTube and others have commercial license, which you can use for client projects as well. But they also have a new thing called the Artlist Max, which is basically a subscription that gives you access to everything that they own, either from Artlist, HitFilm, iMerge, almost every product that they own and they own a lot. So if you want to try them out, feel free to use the link in the description to get an additional two months or just sign up for free. But again, huge thank you to Artlist and thank you to you guys for listening. Now, the most interesting addition of transitions that shot 
shot cut added to the list is the custom option. Now, I'm not talking about the custom of making keyframes and all these custom transitions like we did in the last clip, but I'm talking about actually importing custom made transitions, either made from a third party or just downloading them from somewhere such as a pre-made template. Now, these includes examples like overlay transitions, transitions made with masking techniques, and probably keyframe transitions if it's compatible, but it's a really interesting tool that I want to show you how to use. So I've seen a lot of matte transitions in use, so I'm going to show you how you guys can use them as well. And to apply them, all you have to do is have your video clips ready and open a second video track. And then you want to split your first video clip towards the end where you want the transition to start, drag that up to the second video track, and then your second video clip, what you want to do is just drag it right underneath it. Or the other way around, depending on the transition itself. And really be careful with this, because that means you have to split your second video clip towards the beginning and then put it on the top track overlaying it with the first clip just like we did in the keyframe transition section of the video but like i said it depends on the transition and your best bet is to do it how we're doing it right now then select on the split section of the clip and then go to filters and search for mask from file once it's applied just go down to the menu and select custom and then from there you can just open the custom mask transition file and it will automatically apply it and you can see how it looks like Aside from that, the process is basically the same if we go back to our original clip where we have just the two clips side by side and overlaid to create the cross section like before. Then go to properties and the transition panel is opened up again. However, this time we're going to select custom and then open the custom transitions that we have downloaded. And you guessed it, it will apply itself automatically and there will be no need of doing anything else. And it will behave exactly like a built-in transition that Shotgun already offers. And the neat thing is that once you import it, it will automatically save so you can use it whenever you're ready to use it again. Now, I haven't had too much time to explore this option, but I have looked around and explored other people providing download links to their own custom transitions that you guys can use and download and then from there you can just import it into shotcut but just be careful from who you download it from and just do your research in fact shotcut provides a link with their own custom made transitions and you can download it just from the website itself it will actually give you a little option in the transition properties and you can go ahead and download them and use them now they might not be the most modern or attractive transitions out there but it's a proof of concept that they actually work and this opens a door to all sorts of possibility. So I set myself to keep exploring and researching more about this topic to see if I could do something about it. Now, if all of you are okay with it and assuming that's technically possible in Shotcut, I want to make my own custom transitions and give them all to you. At least those of you who edit on Shotcut. And I want to find a way to make not only good looking transitions, but easy to use transitions. And that's the key right there. Now, I don't know when or where I'm going to finish and provide links to these transitions, but don't worry, I'll keep you guys updated. Just let me know what you think, like for real. If it's something that would interest you to use and see the process as I go along and share my process with you. So keep an eye out for all those updates. Now, if you want more on Shotcut, I have a whole series that I think you guys will like. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.